Hello Gophers, today in this video we will be learning about how to run your multiple test case in parallel and also how to use environment variables per test case individually. So let's begin the journey and try to understand the functions in detail. So to run the test case in parallel we have few functions that are available to us like parallel and run. Now these two functions help you in running the test cases in parallel and we have a set environment function which helps you in setting the environment variable but with a catch. Now you cannot set environment variable from the test case that is running in parallel. This is obviously because if two test cases are running in parallel and both of them are accessing the environment variable, you cannot, you cannot set in different environment variables for both the test cases because that environment variable is not specific to test cases it would be system wide environment variables so if you are using test cases or running test cases in parallel you cannot set environment variable we also have few functions which helps you in eliminating the stack trace of your testing helper functions so you have a helper function through which you mark the function as a helper and it does not end up getting into the stack list so we also have some skip functions which help you in skipping the execution of a particular test case. Now this would be only applicable if the test case is not marked as failed till that point of time. If the test case is marked as failed using the fatal or error or failed functions, then even skipping the test case would result in failing of the test case. So that test case is already marked as failed. So you need to keep in mind while skipping a function that it should not be failed till that point in time. So now let's start by understanding each and every function in detail where you can understand in code how to implement those functions. So now let's understand the helper function in a small detail. Helper function will mark the test helper function. Now what is test helper function? Let's say you have a test case which is calling some method which is again helping only for test case that's that's not a function that is used in actual implementation so that is just to generate let's say a mock object or let's say get some input values or anything that helps you in running your test case so whenever you are executing those functions that function end up in the call stack trace so if you want to mark those functions as not to be included in stack trace so that in case there is some exception being raised, you can, you can skip those test helper function and you can actually get only function names that were executed from original uh, code, actual code. So we use the, te uh, the t dot helper function and this would mark the function, the corresponding function in which the helper is called as a helper function and it would remove it from the stack trace that we have. So runtime.caller will not return this function in the trace. So this is how you can use a helper function. Now let's understand the parallel and the run function. Now run function is something that we have been using in the complete explanation of other functions in the same package but the basic run function is helping you to split your ex uh, your test case into multiple scenarios so let's say i have this test case that is test check if prime table so this is corresponding to a function now for testing of this function i have multiple scenarios so there are two ways either i can create multiple functions and keep testing the different scenarios in all the functions uh, altogether separate or I create one function for one actual implementation and keep adding the scenarios in the test cases and use the run function. Now run function takes in two arguments the first one being the name of the scenario that you want to execute that I have created right here and second one is a function that takes in an argument of type t from the testing structure. Now this function is executed in a go routine but until unless you mark that function or that uh, 
f function that is that you are supplying in over here as parallel it would stop the execution of other test cases until unless this test case or this scenario is completed and only if that test case returns something failed or success after that only the second test case scenario or the second run function or the second scenario next scenario would start getting executed so if you see right now this is a plain implementation where i have called a test function this test function takes in only the test case for which we are trying to execute and returns a function which is a getting a parameter accepting a parameter of type t now over here i have called the prime function from the actual file i have validated i have added some log or error messages if it is failed let's let's remove this for now because and over here if you see i have only added some error logs to just get an output if in case the test case has failed or the scenario has failed so if you will see right now we will get a start message being printed from the run function which will state that what scenario it is executing the name of the scenario and then the run and in actual function implementation i have also printed function space the number for which it is executing now let's execute this in a verbose mode now if you see the print sequence it has printed testing 2 that is one of our scenario that is 2 then it has executed the function actual function and then it printed the end of the end uh, statement and after an only this this uh, test case was completed it got uh, to the line of printing the end and then it started taking up the next scenario so this is how the run would behave but but let's say if i use the parallel over here now it will start executing all these scenarios in parallel because it will execute this function that you are returning from the function uh, test function in go routine and will not wait for the output of that particular go routine now let me clear the screen now let's run now if you see the output over here first we are getting run then the testing for test scenario 2 has been paused and we have got this end because but still the fun function 2 is not printed that is from the actual implementation so the actual implementation is yet not called but but the test case has been paused and we we go to the uh, execution of test case 3 and this is how it keeps adding up all the scenarios in a go routine and in background now it starts executing all this and whenever it starts executing it will print that we have continued executing this test case and so on so there is no guarantee of sequence so sequence if you remember we had 2 3 4 so over here it has executed two first and then the last scenario so scenarios sequence is not guaranteed over here now if that is of some importance to you the scenario sequence then you should not go for parallel secondly if you are trying to set some environment variable from the test case test case go routine and and if this is running this test case is running in parallel it will give you an error let's try this dot set environment let's say set environment variable as test env and we'll supply in some value let's say x so this set env is helping you to clean up the environment back to its original state as soon as this test function or this test scenario gets completed so it will restore the environment variables value test env to its original state whether it was it was available as an environment variable then it will set to a previous value otherwise it will remove the environment variable if it was it was not already set there now let's start understanding the last set of function that is skip functions now for skip functions we have four functions that is skip skip now skip f and skipped so skipped function is basically to check the status of that particular test case if it is skipped or not 
Now, if your test case has already failed and you're trying to skip that test case, but then your actual result for that test case will still be failed. So you should make a note that before you skip, your function should not have been failed. Your test case should not have been failed. Otherwise the result would not change. So let's say I have these test case scenario where uh, this is actually a prime number and I'm expecting this not to be a prime number. So the result should be an error. Now I am writing a skip. Now the only difference between a skip and skip F is the skip is have is equivalent to a log log and followed by a skip now. Now skip now would skip that function then and there. It is almost equivalent to fail now. So it would it would end that test test case then and there. It will not execute any line further uh, in that test case scenario, particular test case scenario. So skip is a log followed by a skip now. That means if we are calling a skip, we will not being executed this log statement in the yeah, after the skip statement. And a skip f is log f followed by a skip now. So we will use only skip function just for simplicity, but you can you can actually use skip f if you want to format your skip messages. Now let's try and execute this in a verbose mode. Now if you see all my functions have been skipped. It is mentioning that skip test case two, three, four, seven, but for the last one, which it actually has failed. And you can see the error message over here that this number check prime expects a false, but it has got true. That means it says that this is a prime number and we are expecting it to be a false. So it is still fail and your complete test case execution status is also failed. So you should keep in mind that whenever you're skipping your function or your test case should not be failed. So ideally I would add a check of fail. And if it is, uh, I'll have it, I'll have to add a not and it should not be failed. And if it is not failed, then only I will skip it. Otherwise it doesn't matter because it is already failed and it will have no impact on that. So this is how you can use the skip a function skip now or skip f. Now skip now does not take any argument. So you cannot customize any skip messages that why are you actually trying to skip? So if you see in all our test cases, we are printing the skip message that we are we have customized over here. But if you use skip now, then you cannot enter any message and it would rely on your logging. So, so if you write a skip now, you, you don't get an opportunity to log anything with that function, but you have to manually add some logs on your own. So you can, you can see that you don't see any log for skipping now. So that's all on the T structure in the testing package. Hope you liked the video and it was some help to you guys. If you like the video, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, we would love to hear from you guys of any feedback or any, any suggestions on any video or particular tutorial that you want us to make for you guys in comment down below. So please, please leave some comments down below on any suggestions or feedbacks from you guys.